Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts and prepare your taste buds as we embark on a relentless journey through the kingdom of brews. Welcome to the realm of intoxicating flavors and head-banging beer reviews. What's up, everybody? It's the Ginger Yeti, and I'm checking in from home. It's a brutally cold night here in Cleveland, and what else are you going to do but stay home and drink some beers? So what I have for you today, this evening, is... The Central Coast Saison from 2016, and this is from Libertine Brewing Company. Now, if you watched my uh, Rare Beer Club video on the Rare Barley Dark Project, it was uh, video number 46 where I opened the box up and picked a beer and did a review on it. This is the other beer that was in the box. It's a really cool beer. I mean, cool beer label here. And you saw that video, you saw me get excited for the, the picture on the back. Because the picture on the back is really cool. I'll make sure to pop that up there. But that's a really cool picture with like some punk rockers and everybody looking like they're having a real good time. Uh, don't know why that's on there, but it's really cool looking. Now, if you've watched my videos before or if you haven't, Rare Beer Club is a uh, subscription service that I'm lucky enough I get every year as a Christmas gift. Uh, the the, the uh, level I get is two of these bombers every month. And they're always different beers. Uh, it is a little pricey. Um, it's nineteen fifty a beer plus shipping and handling. So it's about 50 bucks, give or take. But hey, I'm not paying for it. It's a gift to me, so I love it. And it always comes with a cool little info thing about the beer and about the brewery. And I'm not going to read you everything, but I will read you a little bit about it. Uh, this brewery started back, started up back in 2012 and has built a growing name for itself through its use of local wild yeasts and carefully barrel-aged beers. All of their wild ales include the featured Central Coast Saison, Spend the Night in the Brewery's Open Top Cool Ship. As Libertine puts it, this process allows the local wild yeasts of our area to naturally start the fermentation process. Relying on our environment gives us a gives our beer a true Central Coast terroir. So with them doing that, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with cool ships, but these basically these open, open troughs and it's open air fermentation. So they could make this same beer a dozen times, and it'll probably be different each time because there's going to be different yeasts and different things getting into the beer every time they ferment it, or every time they brew it. And when they make it there, it'll be special just for that region. Because if you try to do this same beer somewhere else, there's going to be different yeasts and other things floating in the air that are going to make it taste different. So that's really cool. Now, like I said, I'm not going to read everything on this paper, but there are some notes here that I wanted to read to you all. Uh, about the brewery, Libertine has got some excellent visiting options. Their original brew pub in Morrow Bay is called the Libertine Pub and offers views of the nearby bay and Morrow Rock, as well as 37 taps and a full menu with live music to enjoy the spectacular views. In downtown St. Louis Obispo is the Libertine, a 9,000 square foot production facility, as well as the company's flagship restaurant, offering up to 77 taps, a full menu highlighting local farmers and creameries, and what is appropriately called the rarest bottle list in the country. I wonder what that's about. I'd love to see what the rarest bottle list in the country is. That sounds like it could be worth a stop. There's also a new Libertine tasting room in Avila Beach, offering 12 Libertine beers on tap, featuring their famous wild ales, a new collaboration series beers. And if you're into barrel-aged cold brew, or think you might be, consider the quaint Libertine coffee bar in downtown St. Louis Abismo. All that sounds spectacular. I'd love to go visit this place, especially the location with 77 taps. That's a lot of taps. And, you know, I recommend if you're out and about traveling, or even if you're just in your local area, go visit your local breweries. They're usually really cool places to hang out. You can have a lot of fun there. They always have good beers. And it's just a nice time. Let's get into the beer. This Saison, like all of Libertine's wild ales, gets exposed to the local yeast and bacteria through an overnight stay within the brewery's cool ship, which introduces a complex melange of microflora that ultimately helps contribute all sorts of nuances to the final product. 
and this exceptional saison is further fermented and barrel aged in French oak. French oak. Is that like wine barrels? The Central Coast Saison pours a bold golden orange. So we'll have to look for that color. See if it's actually a golden orange. With flecks of amber and copper, which gets capped by a replenishing, fine bubbled white foam. This beer essentially glows in the glass with champagne-like bubbles and a look that had us thinking of some of our favorite barrel-aged Saisons and Lambics. While this gets billed as both a wild ale and a Saison, the aromatics had us thinking of Belgian Lambics for sure, as this is a mouth-watering beer packed with funk and sour lemons and just immensely structured fermentation-wise for a quieter brewery in Central California. The aroma is filled with vibrantly tart tree fruits, the rich funk of blue cheese, plus lots of herbs and toasty grain. The bright expression of being dry hopped with lemon drop and bodacia hops adds to the aromas and com complements the funky yeast. After a swirl or two in the glass, dense earthy aromas arise with barnyard and horse blanket. Dry herbs and pebbly minerality. There's that horse blanket again. I want to know, like, I know what horse blankets smell like. I want to know who saw a horse blanket and went, hmm, I wonder what that tastes like. I've never thought about tasting a horse blanket, but I don't know. Somebody must have to get those flavors out of there. Now, if you saw that video from the rarely, the rare barley dark project, that thing just exploded everywhere. It was just super active, constantly, constantly fizzing everywhere. And I have a feeling this beer is going to do the same. So that's interesting. There's a cap, crown, open up the crown. And even though it's got a cork, there's already some fluid coming out above the cork. I don't know if you can see it, but there's already some fluid coming out above the cork. So I'm guessing this is going to make a giant mess once again. Now, while I struggle through this cork, uh, on Beer Advocate, this gets a 3.93 with two point or 2,000 check-ins. On uh, Beer Advocate, it gets a 90, but there's only 21 check-ins. And I was watching a thing, uh, Good Eats with Alton Brown, and he said this is a terrible corkscrew to use because it just chews up the corks. And I agree with him. Because both times I've used this, it is just totally chewed the cork up. But it is pulling it out. And let's hope it doesn't just go everywhere like the last beer I had. Some nice gun smoke. And it's not fizzing over the top. So that's cool. I'd call that a win. Although this corkscrew completely chewed up the cork here. Oh, and the cork just says Libertine 2016. Nothing real cool. And I'm already getting a lot of funk. I mean, I haven't even opened that. There's still some gun smoke coming out. And I'm just getting a lot of funk out of this beer. That smell is just funky. I mean, if this was a beer day with TK, this would get a funky from the Bismarck Key. That is, wow. Now, it does say on the paperwork, a tulip, a goblet, or a Chardonnay glass. I don't know what a Chardonnay glass is, but I do have this goblet. Very effervescent, fizzing up. You can hear the fizz. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up. But that's definitely very, very active, very loud. As far as color, I mean, you can't really see through that. There's some carbonation in there. Go to my winemaker's SRM chart. Hold it up to the light. I think I'm going to give this an 8. What did it say it's supposed to look like? I don't remember. I'm a dummy. It said it was supposed to be some sort of color. Golden orange. Yeah, that's probably a golden orange. Swirl, swirl it around. Can't talk. As that head's dissipating. I mean, there was a lot of head on there originally, but that dissipated rather quickly. So I hate this. That absolutely smells like horse blanket. I don't know why I hate that term so much. 
but it definitely smells like horse blanket. That is just funky and funky. I mean, that's, I don't know. There is some oak there, I guess. It says French oak, so I'm assuming it was made with like probably white wine or champagne or something. Because they don't just get fresh oak, to my knowledge. They usually use uh, barrels that have been used to age something else. So I'm assuming it was some sort of wine barrel. But you do get some oaky character to that. And funk, like horse blanket. Again, there's that term. God, I hate myself for even using it. And that's probably enough talking about horse blanket. Let's see if it tastes like one. Cheers, everybody. White body, effervescent, and funky. That is odd. That is odd. It's very drying. You do get some oak, some oak notes to it. It's not. It's not sour. I don't know that it's even really tart, but it's puckering, if that makes sense. Like, that is just a, a funky, funky flavor. There is some lemoniness to it, like some lemon, some mustiness. This is the kind of beer that is probably beyond my palate. Uh, this is something that people who like funky peaty scotches would like. It's a very complex, very interesting flavor. Man. Man. But it's super drying. And it makes you want to go back for more. I mean, again, this is a... This has been in the bottle since 2016. And some of this paperwork said it should probably age a year or two longer, but not much longer than that. This is very... This is wild. This is very interesting. It's very complex. I mean, look at that head. You know... I would definitely drink this again because it's just a, uh, such a unique and interesting flavor. Give it a big horns up. I hate saying it. You still get that horse blanket smell. This is a funky beer. You know, this is a this is a big adventure in flavor. If you want to walk on the wild side and and, and step out of your comfort zone. And taste something very unique. Try something very unique. Central Coast Saison uh, from Libertine. The rare wild ale having been fermented in barrel aged in French oak with unclear intentions yet spectacular results. Absolutely check it out. It's a one of a kind beer. And embrace that adventure. <laughs>